The sirens were deafening, a cacophony of shrill wails that pierced the tranquility of the diplomatic station. I sprang from my seat, adrenaline coursing through my veins as I raced towards the command center. Status report, I barked, my voice barely audible over the blaring alarms. Ambassador Martins, a young ensign, greeted me, her face etched with concern. We have an unidentified object on a collision course with the station. Eat a five minutes. My mind raced, calculating the implications of such an event. Thousands of lives were at risk, not to mention the delicate negotiations that had brought together representatives from countless worlds. I couldn't let this be the end, not after everything we had sacrificed to get here. Get me a visual, I commanded, and a massive holographic display flickered to life, revealing the ominous object hurtling towards us. My God, I muttered under my breath. The rock was massive, easily the size of a small moon, its jagged surface glinting menacingly in the starlight. All defensive systems have proven ineffective, the ensign reported grimly. That thing's composition is unlike anything we've encountered. I clenched my jaw, my mind racing through potential solutions. Suddenly, a memory resurfaced a conversation with one of the engineers about an experimental propulsion system designed for precision maneuvering of small craft. Ready the X-15, I ordered, earning a puzzled look from the ensign. Ambassador, that's a one-man vessel. You can't seriously be considering. No time to argue, I cut her off. If we can't stop that rock, we have to nudge it off course. Even a slight deviation could be enough. The ensign nodded reluctantly, recognizing the gravity of the situation. As I sprinted towards the launch bay, the words of an old mentor echoed in my mind. Diplomacy is about more than just words. Sometimes you have to take action. The X-15 was a sleek, compact vessel, bristling with cutting-edge technology. I strapped myself into the cockpit my hands trembling slightly as I initiated the pre-flight sequence. Ambassador, are you sure about this? The voice of the station's chief engineer crackled over the comm. Not in the slightest, I admitted with a wry smile. But if there's even a chance, I have to take it. The engines roared to life, and I felt the familiar tug of acceleration as the X-15 rocketed out of the launch bay. The asteroid loomed before me, a behemoth of doom that seemed to mock my feeble efforts. Calculating intercept trajectory, the onboard computer chimed, and a series of coordinates flickered across my display. I took a deep breath, steadying my hands on the controls. This was it the moment that would define not just my career, but the future of humanity's place in the galactic community. For Earth, I whispered, and with a flick of my wrist, the X-15 surged forward, hurtling towards the oncoming asteroid. The collision was catastrophic, the shockwave rattling my bones as the X-15's engines strained against the asteroid's immense mass. For a terrifying moment, I thought my efforts were in vain, but then, ever so slightly, the rock's trajectory began to shift. Yes, I couldn't help but cry out in triumph as the station's trajectory was cleared, the asteroid now hurtling harmlessly into the void. As the X-15 drifted limp, its engines spent, I allowed myself a moment to revel in the victory. But I knew this was only the beginning a trial by fire that would test humanity's resolve and our place among the stars. With a weary smile, I opened a channel to the station. This is Ambassador Martins. Tell the delegates we're still on for those negotiations. In the aftermath of the averted disaster, I found myself thrust into the spotlight hailed as a hero by humans and aliens alike. Overnight, my name and face were plastered across every news channel, my daring maneuver celebrated as a testament to human ingenuity and courage. At first, I reveled in the attention, basking in the admiration and respect that had been so hard won through years of diplomatic service. But as the days wore on, a nagging sense of unease began to creep in. You should enjoy this moment, Leonardo, Zyla, one of the Kryn ambassadors, remarked during a reception in my honor. Her reptilian features were contorted into what I assumed was a smile, though it was hard to tell with her species. I forced a polite grin, swirling the liquid in my glass. Believe me, I'm savoring every second. It's just. Zyla cocked her head quizzically, 
her lidless eyes blinking rapidly. Just what? I sighed, my gaze drifting across the crowd of revelers. Dignitaries from a hundred worlds, all gathered to celebrate my feat. And yet, I couldn't shake the feeling that not everyone was pleased with the turn of events. I can't help but wonder if this has made me a target, I admitted quietly. There are those who would see humanity's rise as a threat. Zyla's tongue flickered out, a sign of contemplation among her kind. You're not wrong to be cautious, my friend. But tonight, let us rejoice in your triumph. The galaxy could use more heroes like you. I managed a genuine smile at that, clinking my glass against her ceremonial chalice. Perhaps I was just being paranoid. In the days that followed, however, my concerns proved all too well-founded. First, there was the accident in the station's engineering bay, a malfunction that nearly flooded an entire deck with toxic gases. Then came the strange glitches in the translation matrix, garbling crucial diplomatic exchanges. At first, I tried to brush them off as mere coincidences, but the incidents kept piling up, each one more unsettling than the last. It was almost as if someone was trying to sabotage the negotiations to undermine humanity's hard-won progress. The breaking point came during a tense session with the Cauldron Delegation, a notoriously prickly race of traders and merchants. We were on the cusp of securing a historic trade agreement, one that would open up vast new markets for human goods and services. As I made my final appeal, the translation matrix began to glitch again, distorting my words into gibberish. The cauldron's leathery faces contorted in outrage, and before I could intervene, they had stormed out of the chamber, accusing us of deception. What in the blazes just happened, I demanded, rounding on the terrified technicians. One of them, a young human woman, approached me tentatively. Ambassador, we... She swallowed hard. We think the Matrix was hacked. My blood ran cold. A hacking attack during such a crucial negotiation. It was too much of a coincidence, too calculated to be mere chance. As the weight of the situation bore down on me, I realized the truth someone was out to sabotage our efforts, to make humanity an intergalactic pariah. And if I didn't get to the bottom of it soon, all our hard-won progress would be for naught. With a grim determination, I set out to uncover the truth, no matter how far down the rabbit hole it took me. Little did I know, the conspiracy I was about to unravel would shake the very foundations of the galactic order. The failed trade negotiations with the cauldrons left me reeling, a bitter taste of failure mingling with the nagging suspicion that darker forces were at play. As I sat alone in my quarters, nursing a glass of Earth's finest scotch, the weight of my responsibilities bore down on me like a cosmic anvil. A soft chime at the door roused me from my brooding. Enter, I called out, expecting one of my aides with yet another stack of damage control reports. Instead, the door slid open to reveal a diminutive figure swathed in flowing robes of shimmering blue. Kilara, the reclusive Myrian philosopher, a surprise visitor, to be sure. Ambassador Martins, she greeted me, her gentle voice seeming to fill the room with a sense of calm. I hope I'm not intruding. I managed a weary smile, gesturing for her to enter. Not at all, Kilara. To be honest, your presence is a welcome respite from the chaos. She glided across the room, her movements fluid and graceful, before settling into the chair opposite me. I can only imagine the turmoil you must be feeling, she said, fixing me with her large, luminous eyes. The path of a peacemaker is never an easy one. I let out a rueful chuckle, taking a sip of my drink. You could say that again. Sometimes I wonder if I'm even cut out for this line of work. Kilara regarded me thoughtfully for a moment. Do you know the story of the Cernith Divide? she asked. I shook my head. The Myrians were an enigmatic race, their history and culture shrouded in mystery. Eons ago, she began, my people were on the brink of annihilation, caught in the midst of a bitter civil war that threatened to tear our world asunder. It was only through the tireless efforts of a single diplomat, a woman named Ziana, that peace was finally achieved. I leaned forward, captivated by her tale. What did she do? Kalara's eyes seemed to glow with a reverent light. 
She refused to give up, even when all hope seemed lost. She sought out those on both sides who still believed in the possibility of peace, and through her unwavering conviction, she forged an alliance that ended the bloodshed. A contemplative silence hung between us for a moment. Then Kilara reached out, her delicate hand resting on mine. You have that same conviction, Leonardo. Do not lose faith in yourself or in the nobility of your cause. Her words struck a chord within me, rekindling the flames of determination that had been flickering dangerously low. I was not just an ambassador, but a custodian of humanity's future among the stars. Failure was not an option. Thank you, Kalara, I said, returning her gentle smile. Your wisdom is a balm for a weary soul. As she took her leave, I felt a renewed sense of purpose. The conspiracy against us would not go unanswered, not on my watch. I would get to the bottom of it, no matter the cost. The next morning, I summoned my senior aides to my office, a newfound resolve etched across my features. Ladies and gentlemen, I addressed them. It's time we turned the tables on our saboteurs. We're going on the offensive. There were murmurs of surprise, but I held up a hand, silencing them. Our place in the galactic community is at stake, I continued. And I'll be damned if I let a few shadowy players jeopardize everything we've worked for. One by one, they met my gaze, their expressions hardening with determination. We were a team, united in our purpose, and together, we would unravel this conspiracy and restore humanity's credibility among the stars. It was a daunting task, but as I looked out upon the assembled faces of my trusted colleagues, I knew we were up to the challenge. The game was afoot, and we would stop at nothing to emerge victorious. My investigation into the conspiracy quickly turned into a tangled web of intrigue and deception that stretched across the galaxy. At first, the leads were tenuous a string of anomalous data transmissions, a few shadowy figures caught on security footage. But the deeper I dug, the more a disturbing pattern began to emerge. It became clear that we were dealing with more than just a few disgruntled factions looking to undermine humanity's place in the galactic community. No, this was a coordinated effort, a vast network of operatives working in concert to manipulate the balance of power. We've traced the data transmissions to a remote system in the Kilron cluster. Evra, my chief analyst, reported during one of our war room sessions. Her fingers danced across the holographic display, pulling up a star chart festooned with lines of code. I studied the map intently, my brow furrowed. That region is unclaimed territory, outside the jurisdiction of any major power. Evra nodded grimly. Exactly. The perfect hiding place for a clandestine organization. My gut clenched at the implications. A secret society, operating in the shadows, with the resources and reach to compromise our most secure systems. The threat they posed was almost unfathomable. We need to investigate further, I declared, turning to face my assembled team. If there's even a chance we can get to the bottom of this, we have to take it. There were murmurs of assent, a steely resolve settling over the group. We had come too far to back down now. In the weeks that followed, we quietly assembled a strike team, a hand-picked group of operatives drawn from the station's security forces. Our mission, infiltrate the Kilron Cluster and uncover the truth behind this shadowy cabal. The journey was fraught with peril, every jump through the vast expanses of dead space carrying the risk of detection. But we pressed on, driven by a shared sense of purpose and a belief in the righteousness of our cause. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, we arrived in the remote system that had been flagged by Evra's data. And there, amid the swirling clouds of interstellar dust, we found it. A massive, heavily fortified station unlike anything I had ever seen. That's our target, I murmured, staring in awe at the imposing structure. The heart of the conspiracy. The ensuing infiltration was a blur of adrenaline and split-second decisions. We fought our way through wave after wave of security drones and automated defenses, until at last we reached the central command hub. What we found there shook me to my core. Rows upon rows of data terminals, manned by operatives from a dozen different worlds, all working in perfect synchronicity. On the main display, a constantly shifting map of the galaxy, 
dotted with lines of code and strategic markers. They've been manipulating events on a galactic scale, Evra breathed, her eyes wide with disbelief. Fomenting conflicts, sabotaging trade routes, undermining peace efforts. I clenched my fists, a righteous fury burning within me. All this time, while we had been striving for unity and cooperation, these twisted souls had been working tirelessly to sow chaos and discord. But even as the weight of their betrayal bore down on me, a glimmer of hope emerged. For among the sea of alien faces, I spotted a familiar one Zyla, the Kryn ambassador, her reptilian features contorted in a rictus of horror. Our eyes met, and in that moment, I knew she had been as much a victim of this conspiracy as we had. A sudden realization dawned. If we could get through to her, to others like her who had been deceived and manipulated, perhaps we could turn the tide. With renewed determination, I stepped forward, hands raised in a gesture of peace. Ambassadors, I called out, my voice ringing across the command hub. The veil has been lifted. Now is the time to choose will you stand with us or against us. The fate of the galaxy hung in the balance, and as I looked into the faces of those gathered, I saw the flicker of indecision, the spark of hope that could yet be kindled into a blaze of resistance. It was a gamble, but one I had to take. For in that moment, I knew that our only path forward was through unity, through the forging of new alliances born from the ashes of betrayal. The battle had been joined, and though the road ahead was shrouded in uncertainty, I vowed that we would emerge victorious, no matter the cost. The aftermath of our confrontation with the conspiracy left the galactic community reeling, fractures appearing in even the most stalwart of alliances. In the blink of an eye, the delicate balance of power had been upended, and a vast vacuum opened up ripe for exploitation by any number of opportunistic factions. As for me, I found myself thrust into the eye of the maelstrom, hailed as both a hero and a pariah, depending on which side of the divide you stood. The revelation of the conspiracy's existence had shaken the very foundations of trust upon which the entire galactic order was built. You've opened a whole new can of worms, my friend, Zyla remarked as we shared a contemplative drink in my quarters. Her usually unflappable demeanor had been shaken by the events of the past few days. I took a sip of my whiskey, savoring the smoky burn as it trickled down my throat. I had no choice, I replied, my voice thick with fatigue. If we hadn't exposed them, they would have torn us apart from the inside. Zyla's tail twitched, a sign of agitation. I know, I know. But now we're left to pick up the pieces, and half the galaxy seems intent on claiming them for themselves. She wasn't wrong. In the wake of the conspiracy's unraveling, a power vacuum had formed, and vultures were already circling, looking to stake their claims. Opportunistic warlords, corporate oligarchs, even a few deposed planetary governors, all hoping to capitalize on the chaos. But amid the turmoil, a glimmer of hope emerged. The artifact we had discovered during our infiltration of the conspiracy's base, that strange, otherworldly device it held secrets, mysteries that could potentially reshape the very fabric of our existence. Have you had any luck deciphering it? I asked, nodding towards the intricate object sitting on my desk. Zyla shook her head ruefully. Not yet, but our best minds are working on it. There's something about that technology, something that doesn't quite fit with what we know of the galaxy's history. A chill ran down my spine at the implications. If this artifact truly did predate the known civilizations, what other secrets might it hold? What revelations could it unleash upon an already fractured cosmos? As I gazed upon the device's intricate etchings, a sense of foreboding washed over me. We were teetering on the brink of something momentous, something that could either usher in a new era of understanding or plunge us deeper into chaos. The following days were a whirlwind of frantic activity as I sought to consolidate what alliances remained, to forge a united front against those who would seek to exploit the situation for their own gain. But with every step forward it seemed we took two steps back, as old grudges and long simmering conflicts resurfaced with a vengeance. It was during one of these tense negotiation sessions that the breakthrough finally came. A young human scientist, her eyes alight with a mixture of wonder and trepidation, burst into the chamber, clutching a data pad to her chest. 
Ambassador Martins, she exclaimed breathlessly. We've done it. We've unlocked the artifact's secrets. A hush fell over the assembled delegates as I motioned for her to continue. It's a repository, she explained, her words tumbling out in a rush. A database of knowledge, spanning millions of years and hundreds of civilizations, all leading up to a single, world-changing revelation. My heart pounded in my chest as I considered the implications. A revelation that could shake the very foundations of our existence, for better or worse. As the young scientist met my gaze, I saw the weight of the burden she carried, the enormity of the decision that now lay before us. In that moment, I knew that the course I chose, the path we embarked upon, would forever alter the destiny of the galaxy. And deep within my soul, a singular truth resonated. No matter the cost, no matter the sacrifice, we could not allow this revelation to be hijacked by those who would use it for nefarious ends. The future of all life, of all civilizations, depended on it. With a steadying breath, I turned to face the assembled delegates, my expression resolute. My friends, I began, what we are about to learn may challenge everything we thought we knew about our place in this universe. But I promise you this, we will face it together, united in the pursuit of knowledge and understanding. It was a bold proclamation, one that would set us on a path from which there could be no turning back. But as I looked out over the gathered faces, I saw a glimmer of hope, a shared determination to rise above the turmoil and embrace whatever destiny awaited us. For in that moment, I realized that our true strength lay not in our individual powers or technologies, but in our collective spirit, our unwavering commitment to forging a better future for all. And with that realization came a sense of purpose, a clarity of vision that would guide me through the trials to come. The galaxy might be teetering on the brink, but I vowed that we would not falter, that we would emerge from the chaos stronger and more unified than ever before. It was the only path forward, the only way to truly honor the sacrifices of those who had come before us and secure a brighter tomorrow for all who would follow. With that resolve burning bright within me, I steeled myself for the journey ahead, ready to confront whatever revelations the cosmos had in store. The revelation contained within the ancient artifact was nothing short of earth-shattering. As the young scientist's words echoed through the chamber, a palpable sense of disbelief rippled through the assembled delegates. Impossible, one of the cauldron representatives hissed, his leathery features contorted in skepticism. You expect us to believe that our entire understanding of the galaxy's history is a lie? I could scarcely blame him for his incredulity. The implications of what we had uncovered were staggering, enough to shake even the most steadfast of beliefs. I know it sounds incredible, I said, raising my hands in a placating gesture. But the evidence is irrefutable. This repository contains data spanning millions of years, predating even the oldest of our recorded histories. Murmurs of consternation filled the chamber, and I could sense the fragile alliances we had forged beginning to fray at the seams. It was then that Zyler rose to her feet, her reptilian gaze sweeping across the assembled delegates. My friends, she began, her voice resonating with a calm authority. We stand at a crossroads, faced with a truth that challenges the very core of our existence. But is that not the essence of discovery, the driving force that has propelled our civilizations to the stars? A contemplative silence fell over the chamber as her words hung in the air, their weight resonating with all present. The choice before us is a simple one, Zyla continued. Do we cling to the comfort of our beliefs, or do we embrace the unknown, the infinite potential that this revelation represents? I couldn't help but feel a surge of pride and admiration for my friend and ally. In that moment, she embodied the very spirit of exploration and understanding that had brought us all together in the first place. One by one, the delegates began to nod, their expressions shifting from skepticism to a cautious curiosity. Even the cauldron representative seemed to soften, his brow furrowing in contemplation. With a renewed sense of purpose, we delved deeper into the artifact's mysteries, unveiling a tapestry of knowledge that spanned the eons. Ancient civilizations, long since turned to stardust, were brought back to vivid life through the repository's vast data banks. And at the heart of it all, 
a revelation that shook the very foundations of our existence. We were not alone in this cosmos, nor had we ever been. The galaxy was teeming with life, intelligence seeded across a billion worlds by an ancient, enigmatic race of beings. As the weight of this truth settled upon us, I couldn't help but feel a sense of humility, a profound realization that our place in the grand scheme of things was but a tiny speck in an infinite expanse of wonders. So what happens now? The cauldron representative asked, his earlier skepticism replaced by a genuine sense of awe. I took a deep breath, letting the enormity of the situation wash over me. Now, I said, meeting his gaze with a resolute determination, we begin the work of unraveling the greatest mystery our kind has ever faced. We seek out the truth, the answers that this ancient race left behind. A murmur of agreement rippled through the chamber, a shared sense of purpose binding us together in a way that transcended our individual allegiances or beliefs. And in doing so, I continued, we forge a new path, one that will lead us towards a greater understanding of our place in the cosmos, and perhaps even the key to unlocking the secrets of life itself. It was an audacious proclamation, one that would set us on a journey fraught with untold challenges and revelations. But as I looked out over the gathered delegates, I saw a fire burning in their eyes, a collective hunger for knowledge and discovery that could not be extinguished. In that moment, I knew that we stood on the precipice of a new era, one that would forever change the course of galactic civilization. And though the road ahead was shrouded in uncertainty, I vowed that we would face it together, united in our pursuit of the ultimate truth. For that was the true strength of our species, the unifying force that bound us all together an insatiable curiosity, a drive to uncover the secrets of the universe, no matter how vast or incomprehensible they might seem. With that conviction burning bright within me, I turned my attention back to the task at hand, ready to embark on a journey that would redefine our understanding of existence itself. The galaxy held mysteries beyond our wildest imaginings, and I vowed that we would unravel them, one revelation at a time. As the implications of the ancient artifacts' revelations began to sink in, a palpable sense of excitement and trepidation rippled through the galactic community. We stood on the precipice of a paradigm shift, a revolution in our understanding of the cosmos and our place within it. But even as we basked in the thrill of newfound knowledge, dark clouds gathered on the horizon, threatening to plunge us back into the turmoil and mistrust that had plagued our recent past. It began with a series of strange glitches, seemingly innocuous at first translation matrices garbling benign transmissions, minor system failures on a handful of outposts. But then the incidents escalated, culminating in a catastrophic event that shook the very foundations of our fragile alliance. Ambassador Martins, Zyla's voice crackled over the calm, tinged with a rare hint of panic. You need to see this immediately. I rushed to the command center, a knot of dread coiling in my gut. The scene that greeted me was one of organized chaos, technicians and analysts scrambling to make sense of a deluge of data. What's happening? I demanded, striding towards the central holodisplay. Zyla fixed me with a grave stare, her reptilian eyes narrowed. We're under attack. My blood ran cold as the full implications hit me. An attack at a time like this could obliterate the tenuous bonds we had forged in the wake of the artifact's revelations. Show me, I said, my voice steely with determination. The holodisplay flickered to life, revealing a dizzying array of data streams and system diagnostics. At first glance, it was a jumbled mess, but then I noticed a pattern a series of cascading errors rippling outward from a single point of origin. The universal translation matrix, Zyla confirmed grimly. Someone has compromised the core protocols, injecting malicious code that's spreading like wildfire through our systems. I clenched my fists, a surge of anger welling up within me. After everything we had been through, after all the progress we had made, there were still those who sought to undermine our efforts, to sow the seeds of discord and mistrust. Can we isolate the breach? I asked, already knowing the answer in my gut. Zyla shook her head, her tail lashing agitatedly. Negative. The corruption is too deep, too widespread. We've lost control of the Matrix. 
A grave silence fell over the command center as the weight of her words sank in. Without the translation matrix, the entire galactic community would be plunged into a state of linguistic chaos, rendering communication and cooperation all but impossible. It was a devastating blow, one that threatened to unravel the very fabric of our alliance. I could already see the fractures beginning to form, the suspicion and fear creeping back into the eyes of the delegates. We have to regain control, I declared, my voice ringing with conviction. If we don't stop this attack, everything we've worked for, every bridge we've built, will crumble to dust. A murmur of assent rippled through the gathered technicians, a shared sense of purpose igniting in the face of adversity. For the next several hours, we worked tirelessly, throwing every resource we had at the problem, but the malicious code proved to be a stubborn foe, adapting and evolving with each countermeasure we attempted. Finally, in a desperate gambit, we initiated a complete system purge, wiping the matrix clean in the hopes of excising the corruption from our systems. As the final lines of code flickered across the displays, I held my breath, willing the procedure to succeed. But when the dust settled, a terrible truth became clear the translation matrix was gone, obliterated by our own hands. A heavy silence descended upon the command center, the gravity of our loss weighing heavily upon us all. Without the Matrix, the bonds that held our alliance together were frayed, hanging by a tenuous thread. It was in that moment of despair that a glimmer of hope emerged, in the form of a young human technician who approached me with a hesitant step. Ambassador, she said, her voice trembling with a mixture of fear and determination. I think I might have a solution. I regarded her with a guarded expression, unwilling to give in to false hope after such a devastating setback. Speak, I said simply, bracing myself for whatever revelation she had to offer. The technician took a deep breath, her fingers dancing across her data pad as she pulled up a series of schematics and code fragments. The matrix may be gone, she began, but its core principles, the fundamental algorithms that allowed for seamless translation, those still exist. I leaned forward, a spark of interest kindling within me. What are you proposing? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. The technician met my gaze, her eyes burning with conviction. A new matrix, she declared. One built from the ground up, designed to be secure, resilient, and impervious to the kind of attack that crippled our previous system. A murmur of excitement rippled through the gathered technicians, and I felt a surge of hope rising within me. It was a daunting task one that would require a monumental effort and unwavering determination. But in that moment, I knew that it was our only path forward, the only way to salvage the dream of unity and cooperation that we had fought so hard to achieve. With a resolute nod, I turned to face the assembled team, my expression hardened with purpose. Then let's get to work, I said, a fire burning in my eyes. The galaxy is counting on us, and we will not fail. As the technicians dispersed, already buzzing with renewed energy and focus, I couldn't help but feel a sense of pride and admiration for their resilience. In the face of adversity, they had not faltered, but instead risen to meet the challenge head-on. It was a testament to the strength of our species, our unquenchable thirst for knowledge and understanding that drove us ever forward, no matter the obstacles in our path. And as I turned my gaze towards the vast expanse of stars visible through the command center's viewport, I made a silent vow no force in the galaxy, no matter how insidious or powerful, would stand in our way. We would rebuild, we would persevere, and we would emerge from this crucible stronger and more united than ever before. For in that moment, I realized that our true strength lay not in any single technology or resource, but in our collective spirit our unwavering determination to forge a better future for all. It was a vision that would guide me through the trials ahead, a beacon of hope shining through the darkness that threatened to engulf us all. And with that conviction burning bright within me, I turned my attention to the monumental task at hand, ready to face whatever challenges the cosmos had in store. The aftermath of the translation matrix's destruction left the galactic community teetering on the brink of collapse. Without a means of seamless communication, the bonds that had united us began to fray, old prejudices and mistrust resurfacing like a malignant cancer. 
as ambassador, it fell upon my shoulders to hold the fragile alliance together, to keep the dream of unity and cooperation alive in the face of adversity. But with each passing day, the task seemed more daunting as factions jock-eyed for position and influence in the power vacuum left by the attack. We're losing them, Leonardo, Zyla confided in me during one of our increasingly frequent strategy sessions. Her reptilian features were etched with worry, a rare glimpse of vulnerability from my usually unflappable friend. I sighed, running a weary hand through my graying hair. I know. The cauldrons are already threatening to withdraw their support, and the crin are wavering. Zyla's tail lashed agitatedly, a sure sign of her mounting frustration. If we don't find a way to restore communication soon, this whole thing is going to unravel faster than we can blink. Her words hung heavy in the air, a sobering reminder of the precarious situation we found ourselves in. Without the translation matrix, the bonds that held our alliance together were fraying at an alarming rate. But even as the weight of our predicament bore down on me, a glimmer of hope emerged in the form of the young technician who had proposed the idea of building a new translation system from the ground up. Ambassador, she said, her voice cutting through the tense silence that had descended upon our war room. We've made a breakthrough. I perked up, a spark of interest kindling within me. What is it, Ensign? The technician's eyes shone with a mixture of excitement and trepidation as she pulled up a holographic display, revealing a dizzying array of code and schematics. We've cracked the core algorithms that powered the original Matrix, she explained her words tumbling forth in a rush. And not only that, but we've found a way to implement new security protocols, safeguards that will make this system virtually impervious to the kind of attack that crippled the old one. A murmur of amazement rippled through the gathered officers and technicians, and I felt a surge of pride swelling within me. That's incredible work, I said, managing a weary smile. But can we be certain it will work? We can't afford any more setbacks. The technician nodded, her expression filled with a steely determination that belied her youth. I stake my life on it, Ambassador, she declared, her voice ringing with conviction. This system is built to last, to withstand any attempt at sabotage or infiltration. As I regarded the intricate schematics before me, I couldn't help but feel a newfound sense of hope blooming in my chest. This could be the key the linchpin that held our fragile alliance together in the face of adversity. Then we move forward, I said, turning to address the assembled team. This is our chance to reclaim the progress we've made, to rebuild the bridges that have been burned. A chorus of resolute nods greeted my proclamation, a shared sense of purpose igniting within the group. Ensign, I continued, fixing the young technician with a grateful stare. Get your team mobilized. We're going to need this system up and running as soon as possible. She snapped a crisp salute, her eyes burning with determination. Yes, sir. We won't let you down. As she and her team dispersed, already buzzing with renewed energy and focus, I allowed myself a moment to revel in the fleeting sense of victory. We had cleared a major hurdle, but the road ahead was still fraught with challenges and uncertainty. It was then that Zyla leaned in, her reptilian features etched with a rare expression of concern. Leonardo, she said, her voice low. There's something else you should know. A knot of dread formed in the pit of my stomach as I braced myself for whatever revelation she was about to impart. During the attack, we uncovered evidence that the saboteurs had inside help, Zyla continued, her gaze grave. Someone with intimate knowledge of our systems and protocols. The words hit me like a physical blow, the realization that our own ranks had been compromised sending a chill down my spine. Who, I demanded, my voice tinged with barely contained fury. Who could have betrayed us like this? Zyla shook her head, her tail twitching agitatedly. We don't know for certain, but the evidence points to someone high up, someone with access to our most sensitive data. A heavy silence hung between us as the weight of her words sank in. Not only were we contending with external threats, but now we had to grapple with the specter of betrayal from within our own ranks. It was a sobering thought, 
one that threatened to undermine the fragile trust we had worked so hard to cultivate. But even as the shadows of doubt crept in, I knew that we could not falter, could not allow the specter of mistrust to consume us. With a steely resolve, I met Zyla's gaze, my expression hardened with determination. Then we root them out, I said, my voice firm and unwavering. No matter the cost, no matter how deep the rot goes, we will excise this cancer from our midst. Zyla regarded me for a long moment, her lidless eyes searching mine for any trace of hesitation or doubt. But she found none, for in that moment my conviction was unshakable. Agreed, she said at last, a grim nod punctuating her assent. We cannot let this act of treachery go unanswered. As we turned our attention back to the task at hand, I couldn't help but feel a renewed sense of purpose burning within me. The road ahead was fraught with peril, but we would face it head on, united in our pursuit of truth and justice. For in that moment, I realized that our true strength lay not in any single technology or resource, but in our collective spirit, our unwavering determination to forge a better future for all. And with that conviction burning bright, I steeled myself for the trials to come, ready to face whatever challenges the universe had in store. In the aftermath of the translation Matrix's destruction and the revelation of a traitor in our midst, the fragile bonds holding the Galactic Alliance together were stretched to their breaking point. As ambassador, I found myself thrust into the eye of the storm, tasked with navigating a treacherous path between the competing factions vying for power and influence. It was a delicate dance, one that required every ounce of my diplomatic prowess and strategic acumen. Each day brought new challenges, new fires to extinguish, as old grudges and long-simmering conflicts threatened to reignite with a vengeance. The cauldrons are threatening to withdraw their support, Zyla informed me during one of our daily strategy sessions, her reptilian features etched with concern. They claim the security breach has compromised their trade interests. I pinched the bridge of my nose, fighting back a wave of frustration. The cauldron's mercantile ways were well known, but their influence and resources made them a crucial ally in our efforts to rebuild. And the Kryn, I asked, dreading the answer. Zyla's tail twitched agitatedly, a sign of her mounting anxiety. They're wavering, but for now, they're still with us. I allowed myself a small sigh of relief. The Kryn's steadfast support had been a bulwark against the rising tide of dissent, a beacon of hope in the darkest of times. As I surveyed the holographic star charts and situation reports laid out before me, a sense of weariness settled over my shoulders like a heavy mantle. We had come so far, fought so hard to forge this alliance, and yet it all seemed poised to unravel in the face of adversity. It was then that a young aide, her face flushed with urgency, burst into the war room, clutching a data pad to her chest. Ambassador, she gasped, her eyes wide with trepidation. There's been another attack. A chill ran down my spine as I braced myself for the worst. Where? What happened? The aide swallowed hard, her fingers trembling as she pulled up a series of frantic reports on her data pad. It was a coordinated strike, targeting several of our outposts along the rim, she reported, her voice tinged with a hint of fear. Whoever's behind this, they knew exactly where to hit us and how to slip past our defenses. A heavy silence hung in the air as the weight of her words sank in. This was no mere act of sabotage or terrorism. This was a calculated, surgical strike, executed with precision and insider knowledge. Casualties, I asked, dreading the answer. The aide's gaze fell, a haunted expression flickering across her features. Heavy, she murmured. But the real damage was to our infrastructure. Communications, supply lines, defensive capabilities all crippled in one fell swoop. I clenched my fists, a surge of anger welling up within me. Whoever was behind these attacks, they were determined to undermine us at every turn, to sow the seeds of chaos and mistrust that threatened to unravel the alliance we had worked so hard to forge. But even as the fury burned within me, a cold realization took hold this was no mere act of aggression, but a calculated ploy to lure us into a confrontation, to goad us into retaliating in kind. They want us to strike back, I said, 
my voice low and gravelly with restrained emotion. They're trying to provoke us into an all-out conflict, one that would fracture the alliance beyond repair. Xyler regarded me with a solemn nod, her reptilian eyes narrowed with grim understanding. And if we take the bait, we'll be playing right into their hands. A tense silence fell over the war room as we grappled with the gravity of the situation. To retaliate would be to give our enemies exactly what they wanted, to validate their narrative of mistrust and hostility. But to sit idly by, to absorb the blows without response, would be to appear weak, to invite further aggression and embolden those who sought to undermine us. It was a delicate balance, one that would require all of my diplomatic finesse and strategic acumen to navigate. We cannot allow ourselves to be drawn into a conflict, I declared, my voice ringing with conviction. Not now, not when we're so close to restoring the bonds that hold us together. A murmur of assent rippled through the gathered aides and officers, a shared understanding of the stakes at hand. But we cannot simply roll over and show our bellies either, I continued, my gaze sweeping across the tense faces before me. We must respond, but in a way that demonstrates our resolve without escalating the situation further. It was a daunting task, one that would require a careful calibration of force and diplomacy, a delicate dance on the razor's edge of conflict. But as I looked around at the determined faces of my team, I knew that we were up to the challenge. Zyla, I said, turning to my trusted friend and ally. Begin preparations for a defensive counterstrike. Target their staging areas, their supply lines, anything that will cripple their ability to wage further aggression without escalating into open warfare. The Kryn ambassador nodded, her reptilian features hardening with resolve. Understood. I'll mobilize our forces immediately. As she turned to relay my orders, I allowed myself a moment to reflect on the gravity of the situation we found ourselves in. The road ahead was fraught with peril, a treacherous path that would test the limits of our resolve and the strength of our convictions. But even as the shadows of doubt and uncertainty loomed, I knew that we could not falter, could not allow the forces of chaos and mistrust to tear us asunder. For in that moment, I realized that our true strength lay not in any single act of force or retaliation, but in our collective spirit, our unwavering determination to forge a better future for all. And with that conviction burning bright within me, I steeled myself for the trials to come, ready to face whatever challenges the universe had in store. The battle had been joined, and though the road ahead was shrouded in darkness, I vowed that we would emerge victorious, no matter the cost. As the smoke cleared from our retaliatory strikes, a fragile calm descended upon the galactic community. It was a tenuous peace, one born of exhaustion and hard-won respect, but a peace nonetheless. For the first time in what felt like an eternity, I allowed myself to entertain the notion that perhaps, just perhaps, we had weathered the storm. But even as I basked in the fleeting sense of victory, a nagging voice in the back of my mind whispered of unfinished business, of loose ends that threatened to unravel the progress we had fought so hard to achieve. The traitor, Zyla murmured, her reptilian eyes narrowed in contemplation as she studied the latest intelligence reports. I nodded grimly, the weight of that unresolved mystery bearing down on me like a physical burden. Whoever had betrayed us, whoever had aided our enemies in their campaign of sabotage and aggression, they still lurked in the shadows, a cancer left unchecked. We have to find them, I said, my voice tinged with a steely resolve. No matter the cost, we cannot allow this threat to fester any longer. Zyla met my gaze, her expression a mask of grim determination. Agreed. But where do we even begin? Our investigation has hit wall after wall, every lead turning into a dead end. I leaned back in my chair, steepling my fingers as I pondered the dilemma. The traitor had proven themselves to be a formidable adversary, their knowledge of our systems and protocols allowing them to cover their tracks with infuriating efficiency. But then, a glimmer of inspiration flickered in my mind, a connection forged from the ashes of our recent trials. The translation matrix, I said, my eyes widening with realization. They had to have had intimate knowledge of its inner workings to orchestrate that attack. Zyla's tail twitched 
a sign that she was catching on to my line of thinking. You think the key to unmasking them lies in the new system's development? She asked, her tone a mixture of intrigue and cautious optimism. I nodded, feeling a surge of renewed purpose coursing through me. It's our best lead, I declared, already formulating a plan of action in my mind. If we can trace the origins of the malicious code, follow the digital breadcrumbs back to their source, we might just find the answers we've been seeking. A glimmer of hope flickered across Zyla's features, a rare expression of vulnerability that spoke to the weight of our shared burden. Then we'd better get to work, she said, a hint of her customary resolve creeping back into her voice. In the days that followed, we poured every available resource into our investigation, sifting through mountains of data and code, hunting for the elusive trail that would lead us to the trader's doorstep. It was a painstaking process, one that tested the limits of our patience and perseverance. Time and again, we found ourselves stymied by false leads and dead ends, the trader's cunning and foresight seemingly one step ahead of us at every turn. But we refused to be deterred, our determination fueled by the knowledge that the future of the Galactic Alliance, the dream of unity and cooperation that we had fought so hard to achieve, hinged upon our success. And then, in a stroke of serendipity that defied all odds, we caught our break. It was a tiny anomaly, a minuscule blip in the data that should have been easily overlooked. But the sharp eyes of one of our analysts caught it, and like a single thread unraveling a tapestry, that tiny clue led us down a winding path of revelations and shocking truths. As the pieces fell into place, a horrifying picture began to emerge the traitor, the one who had orchestrated the attacks, the sabotage, the near unraveling of our alliance, was not some faceless enemy lurking in the shadows. No, the betrayal cut far deeper, striking at the very heart of our inner circle. Jomas, I breathed, the name feeling like a lead weight on my tongue as the realization hit me with the force of a supernova. Jomas, my oldest friend and confidant, the one soul I had trusted above all others, had been the architect of our undoing all along. As the evidence mounted, painting a damning portrait of deceit and manipulation, I found myself grappling with a maelstrom of emotions, fury, betrayal, and a profound sense of loss that threatened to overwhelm me. But even as the weight of Jomas's treachery bore down upon me, I knew that I could not falter, could not allow my personal anguish to cloud my judgment. For the fate of the Galactic Alliance, the future of our dream of unity and cooperation rested upon my shoulders. With a steadying breath, I steeled my resolve and turned to face the gathered members of my inner circle, my expression a mask of grim determination. We have our traitor, I declared, my voice ringing with a finality that belied the turmoil raging within me. And now we must decide what comes next. A heavy silence hung in the air as the weight of my words sank in, each of us grappling with the enormity of the revelation. He must be brought to justice, one of the aides spoke up, his voice tinged with barely contained anger. Yes, but at what cost? Another countered, her expression etched with concern. If we move against him openly, it could reignite the very conflicts we've worked so hard to extinguish. A heated debate erupted, voices rising in a cacophony of impassioned arguments and counterpoints. But through it all, I remained silent, my gaze fixed upon the flickering star charts that dominated the war room's central display. For in that moment, I realized that the path forward, the road that would lead us out of this crucible of betrayal and mistrust, was not one of retribution or vengeance. No, the true path, the one that would secure our dream of a united galactic community, lay in a far more profound truth the power of forgiveness and the indomitable strength of the bonds that held us together. With a quiet gesture, I called for silence, and as the murmurs died down, I met the gazes of my trusted comrades, my expression a mask of solemn resolve. Jomas's actions were a betrayal of the highest order, I began, my voice carrying a weight that belied my years. A betrayal not just of our trust, but of the ideals and principles that have guided us on this journey. I paused, letting the gravity of my words sink in before continuing. But we cannot allow this act of treachery to define us, to become the catalyst that unravels all that we have achieved. I swept my gaze across the assembled faces, 
my conviction burning bright within me. For if we respond in kind, if we allow anger and retribution to cloud our judgment, then we are no better than those who sought to tear us apart. A contemplative silence settled over the war room, each of us grappling with the profundity of my words. Our true strength, I pressed on, lies not in our ability to wage war or exact vengeance, but in our capacity for understanding, for forging bonds of trust and unity that transcend the petty divisions that have plagued our kind for far too long. As I spoke, I could see the weight of my message taking hold, a glimmer of realization dawning in the eyes of my comrades. So, what happens now? Zyla asked, her voice barely above a whisper. I met her gaze, my expression hardening with a resolve forged in the crucible of our trials. Now, I declared, we offer Jomas a choice stand trial for his crimes or embrace the path of redemption, a chance to atone for his actions and help us build a future where such betrayals are rendered obsolete. A murmur of surprise rippled through the assembled delegates, but I held up a hand, silencing the burgeoning debate. I know it is a radical proposition, I acknowledged, but it is one that speaks to the very heart of our ideals, our pursuit of unity and understanding above all else. As I looked around the room, I could see the weight of my words taking hold, the flicker of hope reigniting in the eyes of those who had dared to dream of a better tomorrow. The road ahead will not be easy, I cautioned, but if we stay true to our convictions, if we embrace the strength of our bonds and the power of forgiveness, then no force in this universe can stand in our way. A resolute silence fell over the war room, each of us grappling with the enormity of the choice before us. But as I met the gazes of my comrades, I saw a singular truth reflected in their eyes, a shared determination to forge ahead, to embrace the path of unity and understanding, no matter the cost. For in that moment, we realized that our true strength lay not in the pursuit of vengeance or retribution, but in the indomitable spirit that had guided us through the darkest of trials. And with that realization came a sense of purpose, a clarity of vision that would light our way through the challenges yet to come. The battle had been won, but the war for the soul of the galactic community was far from over. Yet as I looked out upon the resolute faces of my comrades, I knew that we were ready, that we would face whatever lay ahead with the same unwavering conviction that had carried us this far. For we were more than just a disparate collection of worlds and civilizations, we were a unified force, bound together by a shared dream of understanding and cooperation. And with that dream burning bright within us, we would march forward into a future forged from the ashes of betrayal and mistrust, a future where the bonds of unity would shine as a beacon of hope for all who dared to follow in our footsteps. It was a legacy that would echo through the ages a testament to the indomitable spirit of our kind and the power of forgiveness to triumph over even the darkest of trials. And as I looked out upon the vast expanse of stars that stretched before us, I knew that our journey had only just begun. The galaxy held untold wonders and challenges, but we would face them head on, united in our pursuit of knowledge, understanding, and a brighter tomorrow for all.